Hello and welcome to Game Master Studio, where we'll be talking tabletop role-playing games, tips and tricks that you can use to help bring your game at home up to the next level. Today's topic, we're going to be talking about parting with characters and what to do when a character in your party needs to leave the game. My name is Jerry, a.k.a. Frieden. And I'm Jared, a.k.a. DMF. And thank you for joining us today. So, like I said, the topic is parting with characters. We want to start off by making sure that we define what we're meaning here. Um, it happens because game groups are made up of people that sometimes a player has to leave. And this is the most common reason for having a character have to leave. You've got a game that's going, somebody's got to go. And more on a permanent basis, not uh, I need to leave for the night, but more I'm moving away. I got a new job. I can't be in the game group anymore. So we're looking at the question of what do you do with the character that the person is playing in that situation. Um, so the first option is the quick and easy and maybe not best option, but we did want to bring it up and that's killing the PC off yeah, the messy option. Yeah. Um, we have already done a podcast on PC death and a lot of what we've said there applies here. So rather than repeating a lot of that and going into the details of when to do a player death, um, we're just going to kind of advise you to go look that up in the library. It's back there a little ways, but we did cover it. I think fairly early on, we talked yeah, about PC death. Yep. So there's a few things I think to keep in mind before you decide to kill off a character whose player is leaving the game. First is you need to realize that even though resurrection magic exists, you are kind of burning a bridge when you do that. Well, it also depends on if you're if you're playing Dungeons and Dragons, your typical Dungeons and Dragons resurrection magic exists. Right. But not all games have resurrection magic. Well, in Dungeons and Dragons, there's gonna be resurrection magic. Superhero games have all sorts of resurrection. Yeah, I mean sci-fi, always... you can explain it away like, oh, it's a it's a genetic clone. <laughs> right, which which is essentially resurrection. Yeah. Um uh, so most games do have some sort of mechanic for bringing a character back from the dead. But even when those exist, killing off the character can be a fairly heavy handed approach to things. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people look at it as you took the easy way out, you know, like, Oh, so-and-so is out of the game. So character X is now dead, struck by lightning. Got to go by. Okay. Well, that was kind of uh quick blunt and honestly bland and boring. Right. You know, like that would be my, my biggest, there, I would have two gripes as a player in that situation. I would have, my first one would be the actual approach to the storytelling. Like, okay, the, the person's gone. So the character is instantly just evaporated. That's kind of, that's again, bland, boring. And honestly, like you just destroyed any continuity that we had going with this character. And second would just be like the whole, like their approach to how they're handling or, you know, which we're going to get into more in a minute, but like the, 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 the respectful aspect of that. Right. And I think that you can use it as a story point. But it may also be a case of like your party is meeting the big bad evil guy who then zaps and kills the person whose player just left. Yeah. Even though it's kind of a dramatic moment and you know kind of sets up him at the same time. It's like, did we really lose anything? Mm -hmm. You know, there there wasn't really a risk to the players at the table. Yeah, I mean, if it if you're already in a place storyline wise to kill them off in a, a nice and meaningful you know manner. Again, like you run up against the big baddie, player just happens to leave. Perfect opportunity for you to sh really show off the true power of the big baddie. You know, you beat up the party; they're all near death. One of them doesn't make it out alive. Yeah, that's fine. I'm I'm okay with that. But if it's just like, well, we were in the middle of a field, and poof, now he's gone. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, the buddy's got him. <laughs> oh God, the grass ate him. Um. Yeah, and so you do want to make sure that you make it interesting. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that can be a very, you can make it into into a great moment for the character as well. Yeah. Um, we were talking about this in the pre-show that there's a, there's a big difference between the barbarian getting killed by a bolt of lightning and the barbarian getting killed because we need to evacuate the town and the enemy horde is coming and there's this pass. The barbarian goes to hold them at the pass and he makes his, his last stand and does like a, uh, Spartans 300 solo style last stand, you know, and goes down, takes a chunk of the enemy with him, buys enough time for the party to get the rest of the town out. That's a very different character death than, you know, rabbits in the field. Overrun right. him. Yeah, absolutely. You know, if, if I die from an infection from a paper cut, 
I'm going to be a little aggravated. If I die saving a town or my party or just giving you a chance to show off the power of the big baddie, that's a different situation. Again, like, you know, it's the, you know, uh, the concept of how, you know, make it epic, you know, make it important. Don't just have it be a menial, trivial thing where you just, you know, you know, evaporated my character off the page where you're writing a story and then all of a sudden you stop and erase the last sentence and just, uh, he just doesn't exist anymore. It's just, I, I don't know. I think that's, it's cheap. It's boring. It's not, you know, paying homage to the characters, not paying homage to the player. You know, like even if you, you know, the player leaves on bad terms, you can be respectful towards them and start of um, part of showing respect to the player would be showing respect to how you treat and handle their, you know, their character leaving. Right. And, for me, I play a lot of these games in part just to have like cool stories to tell people. Yeah. And you should, instead of being bland and boring, make it into a cool story for people to tell, even if it's not about their character. Right. Yeah. I mean, I would be telling everyone about the whole, the time that, you know, so-and-so's barbarian single-handedly held off the, the giant undead invasion so that the party could get away. Whereas it's like, oh yeah, I don't know. They stopped coming and then the character just kind of faded into the background and it was never heard from again. You also big bonus too let's say it's dave dave's playing the barbarian and dave has to leave and you do this big story you know dave may still be talking to your other people and like say what happened to my character like oh you gotta hear this like this was awesome like he he took out you know all these guys he held off the the army people got to escape he died doing it but like they're the, they're f- afraid of him now. Like they're worried we're going to bring him back because of what he did. You know, Dave's going to hear that and be like, great. Like, I'm glad like my character didn't just get killed in a field by a bunch of rabbits. <laughs> yeah. And plus there's, there's lots of different reasons for the player to have to leave or, I mean, even to be switching out characters, which we'll talk about, I think a little bit more later also, you know, other than player leaving, you know, why you might switch out a character, but the player might leave and still be on completely good terms with everyone. You know, like there yeah. may be zero bad blood. It's just like, I'm sorry, but I got a new job and the scheduling doesn't work out. And I like, I wish I could keep playing. So, okay, well I'm going to kill your character off, you know, in this particular situation, we're killing off your character, but I'll make sure he goes down in a blaze of glory. Hope you don't mind. I mean, there's other options too, which we're, you know, again, getting right. into in a moment. And there are certain character personalities that'll be like, Oh, you're going to kill him off and you're going to, you're going to give him a good death. Let me know what you do. I want to hear about it. Yeah. That's going to be awesome. Yeah. Um, and you mentioned one thing that I do want to do a little more expansion on, and that is, you know, what's going to happen when I leave to my character. So how you treat these characters, the players who remain at your table are going to see that and they're going to remember that. Mm -hmm. And so if they have to leave, they're going to see, okay, what's going to happen to my guy. Yeah, it's it's definitely a uh, a respect, uh, you know, at the table, kind of like you know, in in the mafia, you know, if you if the big boss just starts turning around and killing off, you know, the chumpos, and you know, like because they looked at him wrong, the other chumpos are gonna be like, maybe I don't want to be working for this guy. You look at him wrong, and he kills you. So, I kind of see that as you know, like the respect that he gives to this player slash character is the same respect that he'll he may be showing me some well, someday, or maybe this a similar reason, or maybe a different reason. But if player, you know, if Dave has to leave the group, because again, like I got a new job and I have a scheduling conflict, I wish I could play, but I just can't again, zero bad blood. But then the the DM still turns around and says, well, his character's dead. Zap bolt of lightning next. Like, whoa, 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 whoa. Like, dude, like it, that, that stuff happens. Like there's nothing you can do about it, man. Like he wants to be here. Like we still like Dave. Dave's been with uh, with us since the beginning. Yeah. Like what, why are we being a jerk to his character? So then I'm going to think like, even if I'm not worried about myself having to leave the game down the road, like if that's how he's going to treat Dave's character because of this situation, how's he going to treat my character down the road? Even if I'm not leaving the game, like he just clearly doesn't give a crap about like, you know, making it big, having fun, making it epic or, or really like playing these characters up and giving them the respect that you want them to deserve that you hope they deserve that you want, you know, that you, you think that they deserve. And with my own personality, I also think it, becomes almost more important when there is bad blood. I got into a fight with Dave. Dave's not playing in my game anymore. I'm going to, I have no problem with the character and I have no problem with the party. So I want to keep that storyline coherent. I want to make it into a good storyline and also show people that like, okay, Dave and I aren't getting along, but if you're still friends with Dave, that's okay. I'm not going to hold it against you. Yeah. You have a problem with the, player not the character 
Yeah, and I know a lot of people might not look at it this way, but I'd like to think that if you know you're listening to this podcast, you're trying to improve yourself as a GM, and therefore you might be more on in in line with my former thinking. But it's just being professional. Like I know, again, some people might be like, "Well, it's just a game, whatever." You know, I'm the DM or the GM. I do what I want. Who cares? I'm telling you know I tell the story the way I want to tell the story. But I like to look at it like again, you know, running your group having you know their group of friends but it's you're trying to be professional here too like you know i kind of see myself as the dm of like for the next four six hours i'm the boss in the room kind of thing and i don't mean that in the sense of like i'm going to boss people around but like i need to make sure everyone's getting along i need to manage the situation right i need to make sure everyone's getting along and make sure everyone's enjoying themselves i want them to come back i want to tell my story but i want to make sure they're a part of the story I want everyone to be, you know, be collaborating and having fun. I don't want there to be any bad blood or put, set up any situations for there to be bad blood. And if you're just writing characters off instantly without putting any real thought into that, that says a lot to me about, you know, how you're going to handle a lot of different situations, not just, just you know, poor management. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's just poor management. But, you know, again, like if you're writing off a character, bad blood or not bad blood, player leaving or not player leaving you know like it it just it says a lot to me about the you your the dm the gm's character not the, a character they're playing but like their character as a person yeah you know their personality their play style their 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 gm style it says a lot to me about you know their their inner workings and how they're going to just handle the game in general if i'm in a, you know if my first especially if i'm sitting down for the first time with a new gm imagine what kind of experience that would be for you if i sat down at a table for the first time ever with this group and Okay, so Jared's here to fill in the spot because Dave can't make it anymore. Uh, by the way, Dave's character, poof, gone. Jared's character's now in. I'd be like, huh, that's that's it, huh? That's that's what just happened. Yeah, you can poof my character out of here too, man. Like, I don't know. Like, I'll play. I'll finish tonight because I said I would. But like, yeah, yeah. I don't, don't know if I'll be able in. to make it next. Yeah, week. yeah. I think I left the oven on in 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 the stove, and I gotta oh, go. Look at my wrist. I gotta go. Yeah, <laughs> half past a freckle. Um, so talking continuity, um, kind of brings us into our next option. Uh, and that is transmuting the character as it were, you know, to use the D and D term, transmute them into either an NPC or GM PC and keep them with the party. Yeah. Um, it's very useful for keeping continuity. Um, it's a great way to keep the group together. If the group hinges on that character somehow, you know, if you're in their story arc, if you're in their domain you know we're here because of them and if they go away everything falls apart then as the gm you need to recognize that and maybe keep them around you you can't really do the dragon ball story if goku isn't there anymore right yeah you know all of a sudden goku is off the off the screen and, and gone and written out of the story he dies i mean you can keep going for a couple episodes till they come back and they start doing some time traveling stuff but (laughs) um I guess that's an inside joke for actual DBZ fans out there. But yeah, you know, you get rid of them, you know, whoever the current story arc is revolving around, you you probably want to keep them in to resolve the story arc. Or, I mean, if you're a clever DM, obviously, there's, there's always ways around this. Obviously, none of these are rules, but general guidelines, you know, you're going to want to keep them around. There's lots of other reasons you might want to keep them around. Maybe they're the healer in the party and you're worried that the stuff that you already have planned to, you know, for encounters and stuff, they won't survive without a healer. So taking them out of the group kills the group. You also have the point of the group being invested into that story, Mm -hmm. even though it's the quest to restore this person's noble title. You know, the other people still want to see that storyline to its end, even if they aren't specifically getting those same benefits out of it. They've put time into doing this. Let's see it through to the end. Yeah, I mean, it it all kind of depends on where you are in your campaign or your storyline, but just even if the current main story arc isn't revolving directly around this character, I'm sure you have some different plot threads going on that if this character is involved and they've been partying with this party the whole time, like you said, the party's invested to some degree, you know, maybe the fighter made a blood pact with the warlock who's now gone. And even though you could easily write the warlock out, the fighter made a blood pact and is following this warlock around now based off of the fact that they're blood bonded, you know, so you write the warlock out and you're basically like writing the fighter out because the fighter would go with the warlock wherever he goes. Yeah. What do you do then? Okay. Well, I kill the warlock. Well, the fighters of the, uh, he was brought up that if, you know, the person your blood pact to 
dies, you commit sipaku. Like, for, okay. Well, I can't kill him. Off. I can't even kill him off because then he'll kill himself. <laughs> like, I should probably keep him around for a little while. So, yeah, you can either run him as a GMPC or as an NPC. I personally prefer the, you know, and I know it's some people might quibble over the terminology. Uh, for the sake of this discussion, the GMPC would be um, most commonly defined as, you know, the, the GM is running this character. They're still leveling up. They're still receiving XP and they're maintaining their spot in the party. It's just now no longer being run by Dave. It's now being run by the DM or the GM. NPC still being run by the DM GM, but in an, again, more in an unofficial kind of capacity. They're not necessarily receiving XP one for one like the rest of the party. They're just kind of there. They're more from like a storyline support sort of, you know, situation. The the GM will do with them as they see fit. If they think they need to be leveled up, they'll level them up. That's fine. But just like any other NPC, they're just sort of there. Um, they're not being actively role played at any given moment. I think that's one of the the biggest defining factors other than the the one for one XP is a GM PC I see as being like they're part of the party. They are a PC that just happens to be run by the player that is also the GM. Yeah. They're active in all the situations. They're always being there. They're looked to for input constantly, just like any other player at the table. They want to be involved in everything or typically are approached to being involved in everything. The NPC is more support, more in the background. And we, di- we did a, uh, a couple episodes on GM PCs and cohorts right, yeah. and companions and NPCs. So there's if you're looking to do this this route, then definitely check out those episodes. Yeah, absolutely. There's some good stuff in there. Um, I think this is a good option if you have a player who's inconsistent. So if you have somebody, well, I can I can make it, but they always they cancel on a pretty regular basis, or they can make it to every other session or something. That way you you keep them keep the character around, keep the consistency. But you know, if you just if the person leaves personally if they're indefinitely not going to be back unless they're core to the central or core to the central story that's going on i usually try to shuffle them off somehow so that the party remains the players that are here yeah a uh, lot again always lots of different ways to right to handle everything i think i think yeah i think the best option for the the gmpc version of this scenario is like Jerry said, if I made a character, but then it turns out that I'm not going to be as regular as I'd like to be, the DM can play them in their place. Or I have, you know, kind of, it's the same sort of situation, but a little bit flipped on its head in the sense of like, well, Dave can make it once in a while. We have no idea when he'll be able to be here. So it's not so much that Dave made a character that I'm playing sometimes so much as I am playing a character. And when Dave shows up, I let him play my character. Right. (laughs) You know what I mean? Again, really kind of the same thing, but kind of looked at differently. Like, you know, it's, it's actually my player that I let Dave play or there is Dave's character that I sometimes play, you know, or maybe, Oh, we play from two to six, but Dave can only be here from two to four. Yeah. So honestly, thinking of it in the sense of, you know, like where both different people are playing that same character set both semi-regularly, that would be a really cool character to have multiple personalities. Oh, that'd, be, <laughs> that'd be really cool but at the same time that'd be really like when dave plays it they're very reckless when the gm plays it they're quiet and reserved and don't tend to speak up very often so the gm cannot put a lot of focus on them but when dave plays them they're very extra they're, they're a big extrovert they're reckless they're careless they like to be t- you know talkative and try to take control of the situation it would be slightly obnoxious but also kind of really flavorful because that would be a really good way to play a multiple personality character by actually having different personalities playing the character. That was a huge tangent, but I just came up with the idea. Well, in the we, of the- <laughs> we've had several off off mic discussions about multiple personality characters. Yes. So it was bound to bleed over at some point. Um, so I did, I did mention in there shuffling them off Yep. to bring us into, into the next option, which I like to call hero of another story. Right. This is the the character is leaving to go do something else apart from the rest of the party. Uh, Jared actually had this happen in one of the games that we play where people were changing up characters and he didn't like that his paladin had to leave a situation unresolved. So he switched off characters saying that I'm going to be playing this character now and my paladin is going back 
to clean up the mess that he never should have left in the first place. I, as a player, never liked the, you know, this situation, how I was basically, you know, my character was forced to abandon a, a paladin was forced to abandon a bunch of innocents. I was told it was a good spot to switch out characters. Everyone else pretty much was, I was, it was kind of heavy. Not, I wouldn't say heavy handed, but it was kind of not so subtly told that it would be better if I played something else at this particular point in time because of the party makeup. So I made up a new character and said, okay, this guy went off to fix the thing that he felt should have right. been fixed. So and, and that, that's another good example of how a character might leave, but actually the player never did good options for having that. Yeah. Um, it's really easy to bring a character that left that way back. Mm-hmm. So if it's done because a player left, then the player comes back, the character comes back. Um, it's also, if you're having the player stay and they switch characters, then eventually we might get to another good point to switch characters again and be like, well, I want to go back to playing that guy. Okay. His other stories resolved and now he's back. Yeah. Uh, I mean, he gets to go off and be, I mean, presumably he's, uh, you know, off camera in another story being the hero of that story. He can get brought back at any point. We can stop and take a break and switch over to that character and have the, everyone else at the table, make new characters to then be a part of that story. Right. You know, it's a great for like, Hey, I want to stop this story arc. Let's jump over to this other character. Jared's going to play this other, you know, his paladin. You guys are going to make some new characters and, or you have other characters already that are now over here with him for whatever reason. Pal- We're going to play through this storyline for a bit. Paladin couldn't handle it on his own. He's recruited a team to help deal with it. Build the team. Or, hey, the Paladin came back to the main group and met with the existing party that Jared is now playing yet a different PC with. And again, hey, uh, I used to roll with you guys. I know I left. I'm sorry. I need help. Uh, you know, can you help me out? And then, boom, either, you know, he can talk my other PC into an, you know, my alternate PC or my, my now second PC into a different situation. Or, boom, all of a sudden I'm playing two PCs. Whatever the situation is, that's a whole other story and a whole other yeah. tangent. But it's, yeah, it's easy to bring those characters back. It's easy to use those characters. You know, there's a lot of things you can do with characters that aren't dead. Obviously, if they're not dead, then yeah. there's an, a, a world of possibilities. Yeah, I mean, you can use them to resolve plot threads. You know, you've had like, oh, I want to go take care of this situation because we never handled it appropriately the first time like we should have. Yeah. And that also, that character can now be a plot hook. Mm-hmm. You can bring them back as an NPC, as we were, and, you know, for example, Hey, I need help with this situation. Yeah. Or there's a new situation that's arisen, or I need to provide you information, or the main characters are now on a quest to find your your character who left because they need him for whatever reason. Yeah, I mean, and when and if we you know ever jump back to that oh that oh that paladin, I should describe him as uh he can be an NPC, he could be my PC again, he could be still just about to hand it like we could like time could have sort of stopped for him. You know, when when and if we go and pick him back up, it could be like, all right, well, he's on his way to go deal with the situation that he didn't like. Or it could be months or years later, like, oh, yeah, I took care of that. But while I was dealing with that, this other thing came up. You know, it could be three story arcs later. It's an easy way for like this PC left to go handle this situation. Uh, by the way, this situation is now resolved. It's all been resolved off camera, you know, but the yeah. paladin fixed the werewolf problem. OK, cool. So now now not only. Do we know what's going on with the paladin? But now we also, as players, know that there's no longer a werewolf problem in that town. So it's never in the back of our head going like, we should probably still go back and check on, see how the paladin's doing with that. I don't like that there was a werewolf problem and we just left it, you know, as a player. Now I kind of want to see like, so PC, let's say again, your paladin leaves to handle this problem and the other players continue on the main storyline. And we get to the point where we're in the big bads lair and we, bust in through the main doors and we're ready to confront him. And then the side doors bust open and the paladin comes in with a new party. We're like, we're here to take you down. Oh, Hey guys, <laughs> which is something we've joked around about, like, you know, having different multiple groups cross paths yeah. and you don't see that very often, but like, you know, especially like in the world of dungeons and dragons, you know, in the system, like, you know, presumably there's dozens upon dozens of friggin' like, you know, these PC parties out there, just like, you know, adventuring parties all over the place. But yet, anytime you're playing a like, game, it's pretty much always assumed that like you are the one and only friggin' adventuring party. Like no, nothing. Like there's NPCs all over the place. There's soldiers all over the place. There's guards when it's convenient. But like you never run into like, oh, you're another adventuring party here to do the same thing that I'm here to do. I feel like in the Dungeons and Dragons world, like adventurer is not only a valid job, but like I feel like the adventurers guild should have like a booth at the career fair. Like yeah, 
So what do you want to do? You want to be a rat catcher? You want to be a baker? You want to become an adventurer and earn millions? Yes. What do you like to do with your life? Yeah, I mean, lots of worlds, you know, my world included in Wrath, like there are adventuring guilds, like guilds where like, okay, hey, find a group of people to go out and, or, or either we'll assign you, you know, depending on the adventure guild that you're a part of, like we'll assign you, you know, a quest or you can find other le- people that are also interested in going out and questing and you can go quest. Yeah. Like, it's like the Facebook for, you know, for adventurers. Like, hey, let's find some like-minded adventurers that could all get along and we'll go out and we'll uh, we'll destroy some memes. <laughs> what's, what's, what's your party status? Eh, it's complicated. <laughs> um, I actually use encounters with another adventuring party in my games and they're usually pretty well received just as like, wow, that was really different. Yeah. Um, including one memorable one where the party met another adventuring party and one of the players in the group that was playing saw the NPC, one of the NPCs and decided that he'd kind of like fallen in love at first sight with her and like wanted to pursue her. And they wanted to like, like go find out what they were doing. And it's like, that was just kind of intended as like, you're staying at the end. There just happens to be another party there. <laughs> uh, so we do have uh, one that we already kind of covered in a way, um, but we're, we still want to you know talk about it a little bit. And that's where, the character leaves, the player stays, and you just switch off characters. Yeah. Um, it's really easy to seamlessly integrate. You know, you just need to have a reason for the new character to be there. Boom, you're good to go. Ask no questions, have no problems. Yeah, I think that's honestly probably the most common way that you see characters leave the group. It's just like, I want to play a new character. You know, maybe the, the DM, you know, proposes like, this is a good place to switch out characters. I know you've been talking about another character that you wanted to play. Or maybe the the player says, hey, you know, I'm getting bored with this. Can I play something else? I know we're at a good place where we could switch this out. Or I had an idea of like, maybe like, I think that he would want to leave again. Like, I, I want to go kill all the werewolves that we didn't kill. I'll bring in my druid. Okay. Sounds good. That is also sounds like one of the few places where, but it's what my character would do. Yeah. Sounds like a good, they could actually be useful. Yeah, Normally that's yeah, a big it should, cop out. yeah, it shouldn't be used as an excuse, but again, like as long as the, the GM's okay with the character switch, it's a good opportunity for like, well, this is what my character my character would go off and fix this problem, or would just like, you know, or maybe like the party did something horrible and like you're really like you're a lawful good, you know, cleric and the I'm, party did something you want to go uh, heavy find the cops now. Yeah. You know, they did something heavy on the really dark side of the scale on gray scale where like, you're pretty sure it's really actually in the black and not in the gray. Um, we've been through a lot together. I'm not going to go turn you into the cops, but like, I just can't be your associated with you guys anymore. <laughs> I'm not comfortable with this. Like I, I woke up and I couldn't cast spells anymore today. Like we're I need in a, a gr- celestial. I need a <laughs> celestial. <laughs> I need an adult. Uh, <laughs> So yeah, like, you know, that could be another good word. Like, I'm sorry, but like this, my character would leave you guys. Like, you're lucky I'm not turning you into the cops or, or like maybe even like trying to murder you when you're asleep, even though that doesn't sound good either. But like, I'm going to, I got to go. Like, which, I'll bring in another character that's more on the shady side, which is a good PC, like a good player move because just deciding to murder your fellow characters, murdering your fellow PCs in their sleep is also just a great way to breed resentment and break up your game group yeah absolutely yeah that's tpk by your own hands is not good yeah um and we also wanted to bring this up because this is we're we're late 2017 when we're recording this xanthar's guide to everything is still relatively fresh um and for D &D, so there was a lot of new options that came out swapping out characters gives you a chance to try something new Mm -hmm. maybe you were looking through a book uh, a third party material or just different sources and you're like wow that would be really cool i'd like to play that this can give you a chance to play that you know just like talking to the to the dm be like hey is there a good spot where i could change characters because i saw something really cool i want to try or this really fits my character idea actually while we were uh in during the pre-show i kind of had like this this inkling of an idea that's like slowly been flushing itself out during while we've been recording on this topic of trying to play a lot of different characters. And I came up with the idea of like, what if you ran, like it's sort of a one-off, but it's not a one-off where like, it's a quantum leap style kind of game. Oh boy. We're like, you're kind of playing the same character, like personality name wise, but you keep jumping into different stories in different places and you're a different class every time. So you can get a chance to really fully flesh out and try or not flesh out, but a real, a good chance to actually experiment and try 
all the different classes and subclasses. So like I keep jumping, like I, you know, and, and I even have them like maybe the levels vary or maybe be consistent so you can get the same kind of feel. But like I keep jumping, like I'm, I'm a seventh level um, mastermind rogue next, you know, okay, boom, we finish this short little like one episodic, you know, uh, adventure. Boom. Next, uh, next time we get together, I'm a seventh level uh, battle master, you know, battle master. And then the one after that, I'm a seventh level uh, circle of dreams, Druid, you know, and just try out a completely like, Again, I'm I'm always playing, you know, character X by name. Maybe you know, like, but I technically it's a completely different sheet that I've rolled up. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, I I had a character idea because this is coming back to our old discussion of multiple personalities from earlier. Um, for a Malkavian in the Vampire the Masquerade game. Now mm-hmm. all the Malkavians have some sort of uh, mental flaw. And I had talked with my GM about doing one with multiple personalities and actually having different character sheets for each personality as they took over. Oh, that's cool. The physical stats would be exactly the same, Mm -hmm. but then the mental stats and the skills and abilities would change around depending on which character I had. Um, We never actually got to implement it, but we did a lot of like talking and theory crafting on how to do it, how to implement it, how to run it. And it was just, it was a fun thought exercise. Ultimately, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I thought the quantum leap thing kind of worked where like he's always jumping into like a different like in in, in yeah. quantum leap. It, he's always Sam, but he's jumping into different personas where he's trying to pretend to be that person. I might take that part out of it, even though that could be some really fun role playing. But right. if the, the focus was really on like experimenting with different mechanics and you're only getting one session in on these, I might not worry about that. And maybe I would keep the mental stats the same. Give him like decent mental stats across the board there. But like his physical stats change, but it could be a yeah. lot of fun because like, you know, Every time he jumps into this new character or, you know, they're, you're playing this different character. You're like, all of a sudden, like, oh, apparently now I know magic. Yeah. Apparently I, now I'm really good with an axe. Like, but like, cause even in quantum leap, even though he's the same person, he kind of had these innate skills that kind of like on a subconscious level yeah. were kind of kicking in. Like, apparently and, I can fly a jet. And he had, uh, Sam's abilities. Mm-hmm. Um, Dr. Samuel Beckett. Yeah. yeah. Beckett. Yeah. Um, because yeah, he was a PhD and he had all of those abilities and yeah. Yeah, and I remember him doing stuff like he'd be playing piano or you know playing an instrument or dancing or whatever that he, Sam, Dr. Beckett didn't know how to do, but the person he had leapt into did. Yeah. Uh, by the way, Quantum Leap, if you haven't actually seen it, it is an interesting show. Um, yeah, it was probably, sci-fi from the yeah. 90s. Yeah, or late 80s, early 90s. Yeah, yeah, probably early 90s, 92 maybe. Yeah, worth 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 checking out. Um, there, there's a lot of it. You know, you, you can ch- check out just a few episodes. You get an idea of what's going on. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, um, that was uh, swapping out characters <laughs> you know, off off on a tangent, but um, not necessarily a bad one. But it was a cool adventure idea. Yeah, it's it adventure <laughs> concepts. Cause, yeah, because sometimes sometimes these sparks go and they flow, and when they happen in the pre-show, yeah. we make a note that we need to do an episode about that. And when they happen, when we're actually recording. And you guys get five minutes of us talking about an old sci-fi show. Yeah, well, I mean, I feel like if you guys are listening to us, then we're talking a lot of theory. And part of theory would be like, you know, kind of like thought exercises and right. experiments and, and giving, you know, maybe a little nugget of uh, an inspiration for a cool adventure or campaign idea. Uh, but I think I think that's about most of what we wanted to touch on for parting with characters. So. If you wind up having a PC that has to leave your game for whatever reason, or you want to switch them out, here's some options for you. And of course, if you have any ideas of your own that or anything that's worked successfully for you, definitely feel free to let us know. We, we, we talk gaming all the time. Like even when we're not doing this, we're talking games, we're talking exercises and we like to hear what people have done and just come up with ideas for ourselves. Yeah, absolutely. Hit us up. So thank you for joining us for our show today. As always, if you have any comments on today's topics or any stories you'd like to share about how you used it in your game, feel free to get in touch with us. Also, if there's anything you'd like to hear us discuss, let us know. Uh, you can support us on Patreon, patreon.com slash Game Master Studio. Subscribe for exclusive access to early content and also a few other special surprises and tricks we've been putting up there. You can get in touch with us on Twitter. We are GMS Studios, uh, available on Facebook for you to like, comment, and subscribe. And we have new episodes coming out every week with more information on running your game. We're posting them on Podbean at GameMasterStudio.Podbean.com through iTunes and available now on YouTube as well. Speaking of YouTube, check out our Darkhounds 360 VR 
campaign, watch us play through, use the tips that you see here, and occasionally miss an opportunity. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for your support. We'll see you the next time that we get back into the studio.